What's good, Joe? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of Sword Art Online, Alicization, War of the Underworld. Man, that is a long-ass fucking title. But, just got finished watching the episode. I must say, man, this episode was fucking amazing, man. I absolutely love this episode. Asuna, best fucking girl. Hey, well, we'll talk about that when we get there. The ED, fucking fantastic, man. I'm going to have to see if it's up on... I'll also check after I'm done recording if it's up on Spotify to see if I can listen to the proposal because, man, oof, that ED is fucking high, man. Lisa, God, I love her music, man. I love Lisa's music. She's probably, like, my favorite singer. Um, out there, like, I, I honestly, you know, like, if I had to say my top two, like, musical acts, I guess you say, Asia Kung Fu Generation and Lisa, those are my top two, man. I love their music, every OP they do is fucking epic, legendary, that's the Asia Kung Fu, you guys know how I do like Asia Kung Fu, Asia Kung Fu Generations, they only bless the best of the best with their music for OPs, only the best of the best get that, get that music. I'm still waiting on Hero Walker to get it, what's Hero Walker gonna get, the, I hope, it, well, the Hero Walker does get the Asian Kung Fu Generation treatment, because if it does, ooh, then it truly has reached the Shonen Elite. It has truly reached Goat Stats. It has become one of the best of the best if it gets that Asian Kung Fu Generation OP. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, man, so, without further ado, let's just jump right in. So we start this episode off. We got Alice, you know, she's she's on a dragon. Ayori? I, I think it's what she calls it. I, I'm, I'm Yori? I think it's easy. I'm probably butchering the day, but she's driving off. She's right on her dragon over to the village, which is where the fire was, which you saw in the last episode. And then we get this quick flashback to Kirito. He falls off his bed and is crawling to his sword, probably because he wants to get involved in the action, but since Kirito is now officially brain dead, he can't really do much. And Al starts crying at this point. At this point, it's almost all, all and especially the ED and what happens later on this episode, it is all but confirmed that indeed all Alice too wants Kirito's dick, which uh, Why Recky? Why? 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 I'm shocked Feely hasn't fallen for him too in the video games, at least as far as I know, they haven't she hasn't fallen for him. I don't think I think she has. I haven't finished I haven't finished uh Rehollow of Fragment, so I wouldn't know if she actually does fall for Kirito, but in the other games it doesn't look like she has a thing for Kirito. Thank Christ. But yeah, man, I <sighs> why? Why, Recky? I love you, man. I love you, Ryan. I love you, series. I thought I was, uh, Cell World was also really good, too. But, man, you need to stop with having... Uh, you need this first time. You need to stop using rape to get your villains over. That's the first thing. It looks like he's kind of stopped that, judging from his Twitter. Uh, after this, after that episode dropped from episode 10, it looks like he's pretty much done with the whole rape to get his villains over thing. So, we got that. And then, you also got... And then, you got to stop... After the time you introduce the Kid, you don't... You must stop having them instantly fall from him and want his dick. Come on now, Austin should be the one and only. Stop with every other woman getting falling. Asleep. The only women that we know that confirm know that's a fall for Kirito is Yuki. That's it. And she ended up dying. So <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like I love Wrecking Man, but Jesus Christ, man, you need to stop with this shit, man. It's it's fucking ridiculous. Anyway, anyway, so. Anyway, so, you know, Alice cry, then we get back to, um, you know, Alice. She's right on top of the village. She tells her to, you know, tell Ayori to just stay until she goes. And then she learns just, and she has this cloak on top of her uh, armor, her, you know, int integrity, uh, integrity knight armor. She literally jumps from the dragon and falls down, and free falls down the ground. I'm like, um, wouldn't that fall kill you? You know? Like, and I'm like, why did you, why are you, why did you just have it bring you down? But whatever. She falls through the air. You see all these fucking goblins ransacking the place. You see them, you know, charging towards the village. So I'm like, what is this fucking goblin slayer? Which, by the way, got announced for season two. Great. I still need to finish up season one. I think I'll probably do that during winter break. Winter break, I'm going to be, because I plan on doing a top, because I'm going to be doing my top ten, you know, anime uh, list for you, obviously. So I'm probably going to... I'll finish that. I'm probably going to finish up all the anime that I watched that started this year that I haven't finished, which, uh, it's a decent, it's a quite a few series. Got all the shows I got on Crunchyroll, got a few of the episodes that I, that I kind of got started on with dubs, and if, probably maybe a show here that I have yet to start that I want to start. So, yeah, I'm, so I'm probably going to be getting caught up a lot, a lot of anime during winter break, as well as also probably working on Bleach as well. But anyway, so yeah, uh, yeah, so <laughs> anyway, anyway, there's enough for me to get attacked by. So, she jumps down, she lands, you know, she, there's like this green light or the kind of surrounded when she makes, when she uh, finally drops down, but, you know, the goblins are coming, she's like, why haven't one of them going to the south side, because, you know, there's literally no one there. So she lands, and, you know, they're, and, and so she lands, and then they're like, you know, what's going on here, you know, you guys need to just, just leave to go to the south side, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and um, the fact, dude, I forget his name, it's like, you know, the guy that had, that wanted to try and hire Alice, 
he's like, oh, yeah, we can't leave now. That's preposterous. And she's like, what is more imp important, your possessions or your lives? And he's just like, <laughs> and then um, Selica comes in there. And, you know, she's arguing with her dad, which I didn't even realize this dude was her father at first, because I completely forgot about that, the village elder. So I'm like, the man legit kicked out his own daughter when she finally saw her come back. Hey, man, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so they're kind of arguing about it. Like, you know, she says, you know, he tells her that their orders were to protect the plaza, and, you know, circle around the plaza and, and tighten their defenses. So, so it was proven to her plan. So, and then she's like, you know, you guys gotta go, you guys gotta go. And then she says, as a knight, uh, and also, um, you know, Sel kind of also gets involved. She says, you know, she's right, I follow a believer. When did she ever thought she was wrong? And, you know, yada, 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 yada. The dude comes in there, he starts, literally just starts berating Selka, like, oh, you don't, you're just a little girl, you don't know nothing, shut up. And she's like, ah! And then, the, like, the whole background turns to, like, a grayish color. And then he, the dude just looks over at Al and it's like, oh, shit, I fucked up. With, with that, oh, shit, I fucked up kind of look. Where he's, like, just, like, slowly kind of, like, turns his eye over there. And when you see Alice, she has a look of, if you say one more, if you say one goddamn, one, one more goddamn word, if you make one step closer to Alice, so if you make this woman cry, I'm gonna cut your dick off and let you bleed out. <laughs> That's the look she was hitting this guy with which speaking of dicks getting cut off recently <laughs> for my film for my diversity film that cost I had to watch uh, one of the movies that were well, was on the list to watch was Mississippi Burning it was a great movie by the way if you guys if you guys like you know you like if you guys like more of that uh, biopic stuff you guys want to see more about the Ku Klux Klan stuff about what was going on during the 60s with the FBI and such definitely recommend you guys check it out it's an excellent movie awesome watch but and William Defoe stars it which was weird to see because I was like William Defoe, uh, fam, well, where, well, you look so young, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it was weird seeing him so young. But anyway, there's this one scene in the movie, uh, this is probably a spoiler, I guess, but the mayor of this town, who's actually played by the same guy that plays that played the, the boot camp instructor in, in Full Metal Jacket, I'm sure you're not surprised by that casting choice, but the dude gets, he kidnaps his black, but he's kidnapped by this black guy that works for the FBI, and the dude literally tells him about the story about how there was this boy who went to go, pay <laughs> There was this black boy, this little black boy, who went to take his girlfriend home. Afterwards, the dude was kidnapped, brought into like a shed like the one he's in. And then they said he took a razor blade, like this razor blade, and they cut off his scrotum. And all at this point, and then he starts describing it about the blood and everything. At this point, I am grabbing my crotch. I'm grabbing, like, I can feel the pain in my balls right now. And my son was trying to describe it. <laughs> Like, I was growling and I cried, like, oh, God, no, man, no, man, this is fucked up, this is fucked up shit. Literally, my balls are, literally, I'm sorry to, sorry to feel it down there, bro, I'm ready to try to describe this to y'all. But yeah, man, like, <laughs> I don't know why I throw that in there, man, but I just had to, man. That was just like, oh, man. And then he's like, you know, like, you know, like, he's like, he, they said, you know, like, he was like he was zipped in blood from, like, the waist down, man. <laughs> oh, God, that was uncomfortable, man. That was very painful to listen to. Very painful. Very, very painful. <laughs> but also, not buying the uh, that dude's dick off in like um or dick in uh, uh once upon a time in Hollywood. That also had me grab my crotch as well. <laughs> but we're definitely talking about dicks getting cut off. <laughs> so she says that at this point. So she says at this point that you know I am an integrity knight. I am Alice since this is thirteen rank three. Yo, yada. And this point she says, oh no, she says at first I'm a knight. As a knight, I revoke his orders until you all delete. And then the dude's like, oh, what do you mean as a knight? What are you on about? And then to this point, she grabs at her cloak, which is covering her armor, removes it, and, and reveals her armor, her you know integrity knight armor. Everybody is shocked. Selka is like, oh my god, which I swear Selka's design is the closest we'll ever get to Feely actually becoming canon. Which I hope one day she becomes canon because I love Felia. I hope like one day we see her take it from the games and put it into the anime. Maybe not a one to one transition. Reki can do his own separate thing with it, like what the curatorial Alma did with Broly. But I would just like to see Selka in the anime for once. I love Selka. I love her in the games. I want Selka to become canon, damn it. But anyway. Anyway, so so she so she so so Selka is shocked. You guys like she's kind of crying a little bit, and it's like no, and she's like sorry, I I, I hid this from you for so long. This was my true punishment after you know what happened. And, and also he also calls out, and also the dude also calls Alice a witch because of you know she of because of she, of her time when she like went to the dark territory a little bit. She says you know she's a witch and all that shit. But anyway, 
Oh, so yeah, she says that, and then I'll tell, because, like, oh, you know, I knew you were never really a criminal. Her father kneels before her, saying, yes, I accept, yes, I will do as you say, Mr. Miss Knight, and she says that, you know, uh, those of you are, take a lead of the gate and guide the villain to the second gate, and then, you know, go from there. So from there, we see, uh, she calls up her dragon, and we see the dragon just unleashing some fire, taking out the goblins, the goblins make it through, like, that little, like, wooden barrier they had there, where they just had, like, a bunch of wooden planks, like, you know, uh, hammered together, nailed in together. So the goblins get through there, we see them just kind of coming in there, um, a bit before Alice is on her and she's like, uh, she's, you know, just letting the dragon just unleash the flames on these goblins. So then we see one guy, which, I swear to God, this guy looks familiar. Was he the guy that we saw in, like, the first couple episodes of season, or the first part, excuse me, of Alice Station, where those guys were giving Kirito shit until he just actually just bodied him with, like, you know, his sword. It's like, you know what? I think I was meant to be a swordsman, now that I think about it. You know, that guy? Was it him? I swear it was him. It looked familiar, but anyway. Uh, the dude, so the dude gets cornered by some goblins. Alice comes out of nowhere, grabs the dude by the, grabs the dude, grabs the goblin sword, tells the dude to leave. She crushes the sword with her hand alone. This one was fucking badass. And, at this point, the goblins are kind of like surrounding her. She's on the, she's on the staircase, and then she says, I will, I don't. From now on, I will fight for what I want, and I will pres and I will fight for the human empire that Kirito and uh, and Yujo try to preserve. She takes off, she takes off that little bandage that's covering her eye that you know the guy expl that exploded from you know the first season or the first part. I don't know what to call. I don't know what to, I don't know what to call Alcation. Um, do I call it first season of Alcation? Do I call it the first part? I don't know. I, I don't know about this alternate guy. But anyway, she takes it off and. She, and then she opens her eye, and it reveals a new eye, which we saw already in the trailers in the OP as well, so it's, no, so it's not really a surprise, but it was nice seeing, it was weird seeing it, because it had this purple uh, hue to it, like, like a, or, and it kind of looked kind of blackish. At first I thought maybe she like, took Kirito's eye, or like he lowered one of her eyes, which I don't know if that's the case, it could have just been the lighting, but anyway, so then after that, she literally has her mouth open a bit, brings the thing to her mouth, at least it looks like that, we couldn't really, we don't know if it made direct content, she says, Arigato, Kirito. She says, thank you, Kirito. I can post it up, nods her head a little bit while she has a closer mouth. Then she just throws, she says, I'll be fine now. And, and puts it in the air and the thing disintegrates. So, at this point, I'm like, oh, god damn. She has fallen for Kirito. God fucking damn. This is, what I, this is pretty much the confirmation that she has. And I also, but also, funny enough, I saw this meme on Twitter a while ago, which was uh, from um, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That show was so fucking good, man. I love Brooklyn Nine Nine. I haven't watched it in a bit, but man, was it funny! From what I saw of it, it was a fucking hilarious show. But anyway, so there's like she has like so the you know, the Hispanic you know detective chick that I love her man. She's like oh yeah, whatever you know. She's like always beating shit. <laughs> she I love her character man, but she has like this rabbit that was replaced with Kirito, and she's Alice, and she's like I'm gonna protect him now, and I love him. It was a nice little me man. It was funny. Gotta laugh at me. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway, back to the episode. So, you know, she takes that off, and she's like, all right, she's ready for battle. And then the, then the hue kind of disappears, and it's just, you like, you know, blue like her other eye. So at this point, she's ready. She puts it she puts it up in the air, being like, Enhance armamento! And and then she unleashes Zenpon Sakura, which is what I will call it, because goddamn it, that is what it is. Lucky Kawahara, you are not subtle with your love for bleach. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, man. Hey, I'll take it. But anyway, so she uses her Bankai. So, uses her Bankai and just, you know, just nay nays the goblins. There was not much blood, weirdly, though. Which is weird because you guys remember, in season one, there was a lot of blood in that first season or that first part of Alice's Nation. There was a lot of blood. There's this one part where she, like, um, you know, cuts down these goblins and, like, they're pretty much cuts off their whole top half. Barely any blood. There's only a little bit of uh, blood on her sword. There's not these huge blood spa splatters, which was weird because Alicization Part One didn't shy away from blood. When the, when the gods would Kirito face off against the goblins, of course, when uh, where we had um, uh, fucking uh, uh, t Tensei, uh, fuck, uh, fucking uh, what the hell was those girls' names? Rui and fuck. Rowan, fuck, whatever. You know, Kirito and Alice is the, Kirito and Yujo's disciples. I can't remember their names for the life of me now, and I know they're gonna, and they're still gonna be playing a part in this season apparently. So we'll see what the aftermath with them are. So should be interesting how if Rick and Kohara will deal with the aftermath of being raped or Alma or attempted rape. I'm sure those girls have some PTSD from that. But anyway, so anyway, um, 
Anyway, so you know, those so there was that you guys there was a shit ton of blood there. Very satisfying. Of course when Kirito uh arm I'm going to uh, with everything that happened with Yujo and uh, Kirito in the last like last episode of Alicization. There was a lot of blood there. Not a lot of blood here. Which I found that to be weird. I don't know, did any of y'all find that kinda of strange? But you know, anyway. She gets rid of the goblins after that. She takes after that You know, we see them rebuilding the place, rebuilding the area. And from there, we see Alice going on, going off with Selk. I'm assuming she's going to return back to the uh, to the cathedral, to you know, uh, back to the Axon Axon ch uh, Church. She's probably going to go back there because it looks like she's going to be teaming up with those guys uh, as they take down, as they have this war for the, of the underworld, as we saw in the OP. So I'm assuming that's what she's where she's going. But anyway, so she says, you know, I I, I hope I know in his heart of hearts, Dad wanted to come there and see you off too, but. Tad, for some reason, I don't know why. I mean, granted, the dude's been, maybe he's busy, you know, trying to rebuild the village, so. But whatever the case may be, Kirito and Alice get on the dragon, and she, and they go off, while Selka is chasing them down for as long as she can, as she, you know, sees the dragon off. So from there, we head over back to the present. This is one of the work that goes on the rest of the episodes with the present, see what's going on with Kirito and the guys. Uh, we finally get a little bit more of what's going on from what we saw at the end of the last ep or the la last episode of Alicization, the first season. Or first part, I don't know what to call it. But anyway, but I gotta say, so and it's currently July 6, 2026, if I'm certainly correct there. Right? And this is pretty much where we see what happened, how they actually, those mercenary guys got into the base, got into the turtle base, and how they actually infiltrate it. This is where we see that part. So, I first I gotta pray. The music, yo, the music here, though, the pump, 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 the punch, punch, punch. I, I, I can't do it right now, but man, yo, 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 y'all saw the episode, yo, that music, I don't know if that's like the theme for the mercenaries, or what, but yo, Yuki, uh, what the hell was her name, Yuki, Kan, Kanji, I believe her name was, yeah, Kan, Kan, Kanjura, Kanjura, I believe that's how you say it, she, yo, yo, this has been some of the best music she's put out for that, yo, this song right here, for the mercenaries, yo, I want the, I want the whole track, Somebody link me if y'all know where I can. Well, probably not, because you know the, the episode still the anime still aired. So probably once the anime in its is aired, they'll release the CD with the OST on it. Then I'll try to see if I can find this fucking song because I want this the whole thing. This mercenary trap was was a fucking banger, dog. I loved it. But anyway. So we see them getting in there, and we kind of see what we saw in the last episode of Alicization, part one, and we just see it from their perspective. They go in there, you know, disconnect the power, all that jazz. So then we see them 30 minutes later after the attack, they're in the main control room, and they're pretty much just wondering where everyone else went, and they're like, okay, probably the sub-control. We then head over to the, to the uh, that was 30 minutes later. Then we head over to the sub-control room, this is about 22, 23 minutes later in the text, so before we actually pick up with the mercenaries, this is what happens, but anyway, so... They're there, you know, um, the Korean dude's like, all right, we got power, we good. My girl, best girl, awesome motherfucking you can come from walking up to that dad. The dude with the glasses grabs him by the collar or grabs him by his kimono and is like, if you, if Kitty Till doesn't regain consciousness, I will never forgive you for as long as I live. And I'm like, yo, 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 that's my girl. That's my girl, Asuna, yo. Best fucking girl, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know I fuck heavy with Asuna. I fuck heavy with that one, man. I love Asuna, man. I love her. I love it. <laughs> man, man. Asuna. Man, I love her. So, yeah. So, you know, she, like, he's like, he puts his hands on like, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, it'll be my top priority, you know. So, she lets go. Then she kind of, like, she has, like, these tears on. She kind of, like, falls back like she's about to faint. <laughs> we lose out of that. And we lose, there's also one thing else knows. When she's grabbing him by the collar, the sound effects they're playing make it sound like she's strangling the guy. You know, they hear this kind of sound, which... I'm assuming is because uh, she's like, you know, it's like she's holding it back so much it's starting to break the fabric, I think. Either that or she's, or maybe she is strangling him. I don't know, it doesn't look like she is, but it just sounded like it. Anyway. Anyway. So, um, for us, so after that. <laughs> so, anyway, after that. Uh, yeah. So, she, so then the dude, so one of the guys come in there, one of the guys, the generals come in there, he says, you know, he gives him pretty much a status report, says that all the non combatant units pretty much were laid Pretty much we were, were brought over to the bow bay, so they're out of the picture. And then it says, you know, how are the, and it says like two of the the, the block boards, I think that's what they were called. Um, and we're down, and, you know, and he asked for just a straight up status report what's going on. And they say, you know, that how long can they hold up? He says that they're probably, that they're probably, that they, yeah, the blow bow box. Like, yeah. 
Oh, the blockheads! Excuse me, the blockheads! Okay. He hasn't had a lot on their hold now. He says, you know, they could probably get to them with explosives, but that is very unlikely. And from there, he just asked for straight south port, like, you know, what are the college teachers? Um, there's a, nobody has actually tried to die, but we had like two minor injuries, like some to like some scientists that were there, two heavy and two minor from the self destruct from the uh, self defensing unit. I think there was like another one, but nobody's died, just some minor and just some minor injuries overall. So, yeah, but I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Who of y'all remember bad news, Barrett's? That was some good shit right there. I remember loving Bad News Bear. The man, I don't know why I'm totally talking about wrestling. While there's, well, currently you got me trying to figure out this fucking intimacy thing with SEO else. That's SEO Hall Real I don't know how the fuck this fucking mechanic or the game doesn't even bother to explain. But anyway, I remember Bad News Bear. The dude was like on this pedestal. Or like on like this mind thing. And he would like, you know, kind of get up to like ludicrous amounts of heights. And then be like, order, order in my courtroom. Well. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> I love bad news. That's probably my favorite gimmick from uh, from Wade Barrett. There was the Wade Barrett from the Nexus, Wade Barrett when he was King Barrett, and then there's Bad News Barrett. Bad News Barrett was best Barrett, if you ask me. I don't know what he was doing in the Indies, but that was my favorite. That was my favorite. Bad News Barrett, man. I love that one. <laughs> I'm afraid. Of, okay, not me saying I'm afraid. I've got some bad news. Anyway. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing if I'm even doing this right now. <laughs> but anyway, so um, so but that's not all the bad things. They also took care. They also have STL room one. They had the main control room and um and and the right and and yo know, they also got that. But it's not all doom and gloom. Um, the Korean dude I forget his name. Excuse me. Yes, he did mention how they managed to uh, they managed to lock down Alice's flashlight area. You know that whole like giant cube thing where they have Alice in there. They managed to lock that down, so they can't access, but neither can they. So they can't access it uh, remotely or informationally. So the only way to get Alice's flashlight out is probably through Kirito to get them out, which is what we what we know that what we know that was going to happen to the Alice station. But of course, Kirito got fucked. And they keep going on about a couple extra things about other stuff. Just more some more, I guess you could say, more, uh, more stuff about you know the uh, the more of the interior of the place. And I honestly don't remember mo mo uh, most of it. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of talk and a lot of a lot of exposition. But you know, it pretty much they pretty much pretty much, oh they also said that they also have that the, these ter these mercenaries have to have uh, access to sections one through twelve. And they also get some, we also get a little bit more details of what these uh, ter about these guys are. It's kind of revealed that they're probably not just terrorists. And they said that they might actually have that the, yes. Now we know there's a ship behind them by the Turk by the turtle base, but it's pretty much just keep its own distance. They probably know they got attacked, but they're not going to go out there. Uh, probably because because apparently the the one of them theorized that they might have a back that these um that the, 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 these mercenaries, which I'm going to call them, um, they might have access to a back channel. Back channel. So we might so they might not come in until after they've already secured out. So they're pretty much just fucked at this point. Um, they also we also get some more details of what they what these guys could be. They mentioned how judging from their specs and their gear, they're not uh, domestic. They're not like you know some uh, military force. They're not from like you know the Japanese government or anything. Uh, he said they're coded, They can't from their uh, general body types. They said they can't be Asian. Although judging from what we see later on, they look a uh, never. I don't know. The anime characters they're meant to be Asian, but they never look Asian. They always look white. So, they, but they don't look white. If, if you get what I say, they kind of look. They still kind of have like look anime ish. So. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but they still kind of look from what we saw at the end of the episode. But yeah, in other words, so yeah, in other words, these guys are just straight up fucked. Like, yo, they pretty much have, this is pretty much, uh, pretty much all they got here. They pretty much have control of the entire base. And also, um, what's his name actually mentioned how this is like a turtle, a sea turtle that fins it with a shark on its belly. Thought that was a nice little analogy. But anyway. We see Kirito, he's like, you know, still on the, you know, he's still on the thing. And, ah, an Asuna. Oh, this, this broke my heart, man. This broke my heart. You see Asuna, she's on the verge of tears. And she's Kirito. I'm just like, aww. She needs, uh. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, aww, Asuna. You know, like, the poor girl needs a hug. But, see, you know, I'm not going to go on any more text. Anyway. So yeah, Kirito is pretty much their last hope to get Alice. It's fluffed like out there, and so he's their last hope. And he also asked for uh, Mr. Kiku, uh, you know, the guy in the kimono, asked like, yo, what's the status report for Kirito? What is his condition? And he's fucked. Now, he isn't completely... And Now, they said that he's teetering on the edge of, of worst-case scenario, so I'm assuming worst-case scenario is him being brain-dead. 
which he kind of is, but not, but yes, not technically. But, you know, he's teetering on that uh, worst case scenario. And they mentioned how, uh, what happened with the last guy, with the last uh, survivor of Death Gun, that gave him some neurological damage to the tree, and they put him in here. They wanted to block his memories so that he's to, you know, to block him, they wanted to block his memories. So, but for some reason his memories didn't get blocked, so he's been living as Kirito, or as, as Kasuto Kirigaya, for the past two years, if you will, two years in the simul in the simulation, and so Rink Riku is like, wait, 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 what was the name? Rinko? Rinko, I think her name was. Yeah, Rinko. He's like, wait, wait, wait. So he's been playing as Kazuto for how long? And then you know he says, you know, about two years, and and then he keeps going on about you know that you know that that since they can't that they since they don't have the main control room they can't access the laws, but he probably knew that they're going to that they probably knew that the, that all the flux were going to get destroyed once the simulation was sim once the simulation was done, and so, um, so yeah, so that's probably why he caught the real world. And then he said because I can't access the laws, he looked like he also lost some uh, you know some friends on his way there. We also see another shot of Austin while uh, while the Korean dude is explaining this in like an Austin and just. Oh, I hate seeing her like this, man. Somebody give her a hug, please. I don't like to see best girl sad. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart break, man. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Kirito, so the um, so the so the parents explains that what Kirito well, after whatever they have, what the you know the surgery thing. Kirito uh, was pretty much berating himself. In other words, he's he's attacking his own fluck light. And because of the surge that came from the power outage, the short power outage, his self destruction in a uh, self destruction impulse was actualized, and his ego was deactivated. Rinko asks, like, "Yo, what do you mean by ego?" See, then he explains that his ego is pretty much um, like is pretty much like you know the self image of what's inside our fluff like this black hole within our fluff lights that that all our yes or no questions pass through you know like should I do this under this condition he makes the example of hey Rinko have you ever gotten a second helping a beef bowl please she says she haven't and even though you're like you're like mine's like hey come on let's get another bowl here and she still says no that's pretty much what it is you know that kind of like ah uh, you know that kind of whole thing yeah and then he says his boy's current condition is that he doesn't know who he is he doesn't know what he has to do, he can't speak uh, voluntarily, and that he only has reflect uh, reflective reactions based on deeply embedded memories. In other words, he is brain dead! <laughs> well, or at least close enough, or damn near brain dead. And we end the episode off. Asuna is holding his hand. She looks over the second machine right next to it, and then we cut to the ED. Asuna is going to be going inside the underworld next week. I'm calling it, and it's going to be hype because I love her outfit. I've seen it from the light novel colors and from the OP. It's going to be hype. Oh, I can't wait to see how die of it. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. So, yeah, overall, I'm going to give this episode a 10 out of 10, man. This one was great. Our animation was solid. Really interesting stuff. A lot of, in, a lot of exposition. A lot of, uh, world, a lot of world building, man. And I'm really curious to see where it all going. I'm just hyped to see my girl Asta in the underworld kicking out. I think it's her and Alice. Oh, that's going to be one badass tag team, man. That is going to be one. Be and if Kirito gets back, it's a it's game over, man. Game over. So, yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Flag, and links on the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.